So that bit was very hard that we've just looked at. We're now just going to do some super easy parts, going back to what we did previously about drawing the different, different original vectors. So we're going to describe the effect of the following matrices. So let's have a deal. We'll deal with this first matrix to begin with. Well, you know, normally we have i hat like this. What has i hat changed to? Three times, Three times longer. J hat looked like this. J hat is three times longer. So the matrix three, zero, zero, three. Enlargement. Good. I was waiting for that. Center, origin, scale factor three. Do you remember I said on that Monday lesson after school, We've literally learnt the whole topic. There's nothing here, there's nothing new. We know everything from having watched those videos and there's nothing new, it's just trying things out, okay? The only thing that was new was that invariant point stuff. And then for this second one, I'm not gonna bother redrawing this again, but what can you tell me has happened to i hat? Um, yeah, i hat is two longer. J hat, has it changed? No. J hat hasn't changed. So what does this say? Ishak? There's a stretch. Yep. In which direction? Good. It's a stretch in the x direction with the center. Well, do we need to say the center? No, we don't. Um, but the scale factor, a stretch in the x direction, scale factor 2. Yeah, it, it won't affect the y. And I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just go back to that GeoGebra app and I'll show you both of these and what they do to that, that circle. So if we go to this one, we had 3, 0, whoops, 0, 3. So the scales are a bit different. That's why I was getting confused. So you can see what's happened to the circle under this transformation. It got three times bigger. The letter N has got three times bigger. And the grid has got three times bigger. This was the first one that we looked at. Uh, the second one was, was it two zero? And then zero one. So you can just see that the stretching has now occurred just in the x direction by a scale factor of two. And you can see what's happened to the whole grid as well. It's all stretched out in that direction. Um, unless, so the y coordinates have stayed the same and then the x coordinates have doubled. Uh, so what I've written here is that you can say, it's, I've said it's a stretch. If it's in the second one, it's a stretch parallel to the y-axis, but it's the same thing as saying like in the x direction. It's sort of like stretching it out, imagining you're like pulling the two things apart left and right rather than up and down. And then it says when a is equal to b, this represents an enlargement, because obviously if they've both got the same scale factor, then it's an enlargement. But again, this is the same skill as before. Draw the things and, and see what it looks like, see, if it, see how, they, um, how they play out. Now the next part that we've got is about the determinant. Now, you already know the answer to this. What does the determinant tell us when we're looking at? Um, it's the scale factor of what? Area. The area. The scale factor of the area. The determinant is the scale factor of the area. So we know the answer to all of these questions that we've got here. So we're going to go through these pretty quickly because we understand what the scale factor is. So we've got the triangle ABC. Uh, we've got these different points here, and it says the transformation with this matrix is applied to the triangle to produce a new triangle with vertices A dash, B dash, C dash. Determine the coordinates of A dash, B dash, C dash. So I'm going to apply 4, 0, 0, 3, and I'll do it to 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, and we'll see what we get. Well, you can tell me, you can either do the matrix multiplication or you can just think, well, the x coordinates are getting stretched by 4 and the y coordinates are getting stretched by 3. So it's going to become 4, 4, 8, 3, 6, 
6. Didn't even need to do the matrix multiplication because we understand what the transformation is that it represented. So A dash is 4, 3. B dash is 4, 6. And C dash is 8, 6. So the area of triangle ABC, well, if we do a little sketch of it, we've got A is 1, 1, B is 1, 2, and C is 2, 2. So the lengths of the sides of the triangle are 1 and 1. So what's the area of the triangle? A half. Yeah, that's just A, B, and C. That's 1, 2, 1, 2. So the area is a half. And then for C, I'll do a sketch just because it might help us see what's going on here. Um, we've got that it's 4, 3. We've got 4, 6. And we've got 8, 6. I haven't done it particularly well to scale there. But hopefully we can see it has stretched more in the x direction than it has in the y direction. I've overdone it, though, with my drawing. So the, so the area, this gap is, is it 3 and this gap is 4? So the area is 6. Um, so we can see the area has gone up by 12. And it's asked us to find out the determinant of m. So the determinant of the matrix, which is 4, 0, 0, 3, is 12. Because you do the 4 times 3 minus the 0 times 0. What do you notice? We can say area of the object multiplied by the determinant of m equals the area of the image. A half times 12 equals 6, is it? But we knew that because we talked about that last week, didn't we? For this one, it's really easy to see why it's true as well. Because in the y direction, it's getting three times bigger. So it makes sense the area has been tripled. And in the x direction, it's getting four times bigger. So it then makes sense it's being multiplied by four. Hence, it, overall, it's an area rather than just a length or something that we've got like that. So the area scale factor, we've just seen the area of the image is the area of the object times by the determinant of m. Why do you think I've got those two lines around the determinant of m? Magnitude of it, yeah, because remember, you can get a negative determinant, but area can't be negative. We know that if you have a negative determinant from our visualizations, it's where it kind of does a negative enlargement and it goes backwards through the origin, but it still has a positive area. So you must make sure you take the positive value. positive value of the determinant of the transforming matrix. So the determinant tells us how the area is scaled under the transformation with matrix M. So very quickly, let's just work out these. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to work those out.
Okay, so um, Haroon, what did you get for the determinant of this one here? So yeah, it's minus 5, minus, minus 6, so it's 1, so the area was just, yeah, because it's just 9 times 1, so we just get 9. Um, the determinant of this one down here is, what did you get for that, Ishraq? 18. 18, yeah, so you've got the area of the object multiplied by 18, so just get that it becomes 18. So it looks like it's going to be scaled up pretty big. Let's have a quick look at that last one, shall we? Minus 5, 2, minus... Let's do this one here, why not? Minus 5, 2, minus 4, minus 2. Let's get rid of the grid. Okay, so you can see how the that, that circle has got... It's a unit circle, but the area has got... 18 times bigger, so you can see space is being made pretty, a lot bigger in that one. Should we do one where the area stayed the same? So 5, 3, minus 2, minus 1. 5, 3, minus 2, minus 1. It changes. The area stays the same. The space is still being transformed, but I mean, I'm going to trust the maths here. This area is exactly the same as this area that we've got here. If you were painting this, you would need the same amount of paint to cover this particular thing that you've got here. Okay, So you have got um, an exam question here that I want us all to do. It's only three marks. It's going to take us perhaps like a second. Um, and just read it carefully, please. Read it carefully. And then we're going to do some practice from exercise 7C. And that's us done for the rest of the lesson, I should think. Okay, well done.